God. Somebody say hallelujah. Everybody say the joy of the Lord is the strength that I need. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a place in God where when you understand where you're seated in Christ, that you are above all principalities and powers and that every demonic power, every sickness, every disease, every poverty spirit, every misery spirit is under your feet. You can sing a song like that. My God is bigger and better. Amen. He's stronger. He's greater than any of these things because he gave us something called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit's been given unto us, and if we believe out of our belly, we'll flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water, that means rivers of healing, rivers of prosperity, rivers of joy. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. This house is full of joy this morning. Woo, glory to God. I couldn't get a greater joy than to see this man that's been fighting cancer for 25 years, that got healed last night, that took off running around this place without his cane. Hallelujah! Glory to God. I'll tell you, there's something about it when the release in the atmosphere of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Jesus said, if you believe, out of your belly will flow. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me? At the Lord, I, I told my wife, you know, when uh, Pastor Rachel was up here and she was praying, I, I looked at my wife and I said, she just prayed my message. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing? Amen. The Holy Spirit takes the service from the beginning to the end, and He orchestrates His grace. You know, we sang about the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we talked about how that joy is unexplainable. We can't explain it. We can't tame it. We can't stop it. It's something inside of us. I'll tell you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises a standard up against him. You, you, know what a, you know what a flood is? It's a river without boundaries. Hallelujah. There's a river that's flowing inside of you that's, that's jumping up inside of you today. And by faith, we release that river. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, I, I'll tell you, how many were blessed by my wife last night? Amen. Amen. Stand up, honey. Just, just wave and say we love you. Praise God. Everybody say, I love Rosa Maria. Amen. Amen. I was walking in the door, and, some, and, and this sister in the, in the back there, she grabbed me. She said, your wife's name is my name. <laughs> Rosa Marie. Amen. Praise God. Well, we, we thank you for coming out to these meetings. It's been a tremendous time. I mean, how many people have been healed and, and has a miracle to testify? Amen. Look around. You can see the hands. People have been miracles happening left and right. Praise God. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like what uh, Pastor Rachel said. We don't want just to see the hand of God. We want to see the heart of God. Amen. We don't want to just see the hand of God. We want to see the face of God. We want to look into his eyes, into the fire flaming eyes of Jesus himself. Moses said, I want to see your glory. He said, you can't see my glory and live. Amen. So I, I, I'll tell you right now, we can cry out, Lord, I want to see your glory because you know what? We no longer live, praise God. But now we can see by faith. We can look into the eyes of Jesus and we can realize what Jesus Christ has did on the cross of Calvary is everything we need and by faith we can look into the eyes of God and we can receive by faith the grace of God the anointing of God that raises the dead that causes the blind to see that causes the lame to walk and causes those that are bound in destruction fear and misery to be free can you say amen 
thank God the Bible says that we now can look into the eyes of Jesus. We can look into the face of Jesus and behold the glory of God. Can you say amen? The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead was sent down to dwell inside of you so that you could go beyond the veil, so that you could take off the veil, so that you could come behind the, the curtains that Jesus ripped from the top to the bottom and gave us a place where we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help in our time of need. It doesn't matter what your need is. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches that's found in the glory of God. And see, when you understand that we have this treasure in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible tells us in verse 7, we have this treasure in these earthen vessels so that the power of God would not be of us, that it be of him. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead conquering the last enemy is inside your belly. Whew. Oh, church, if we could just figure that out. There would be no sickness in the earth. Come on, somebody y'all with me. If we could just figure that out, there would be no poverty in the earth. If we could just figure that out, we would understand that the kingdom has come and there's righteousness and peace and joy inside of us. And that river that's inside of us can flow anytime by faith. We take a hold of it and let it flow, praise God. Whatever you need's inside of you. It's not coming from heaven. It's already came. He said, I will not return void. Praise man. Praise God. The word of God will not return void, but it will accomplish what it's sent to do. Can you say amen? John chapter 1 verse 14 says, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us so that we can behold the glory. Come on, somebody. So we can behold the glory. God wants us to see his glory. Can you say amen? He wants us to behold the glory of God. I, I want you to go with me real quick. We're going to look at some things by the Spirit of God this morning. I want you to go with me to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. The Word of God tells us in verse 6, Then he said unto me the word of the Lord that came unto Zerubbabel, and said, Not by might, nor by power, power but by my spirit says the Lord see your healing doesn't come because you pray a lot it doesn't come because you fast a lot it doesn't come because you even read a lot it comes by the spirit of God are y'all with me and we've got to understand it's not by might it's not by our name it's not by who we are as I preached last night it's not by our education it's not that we're trained or educated in this world that the, that the spirit of God moves no it's not by silver it's not by gold he said silver and gold have I none in first Corinthians in, in Acts chapter uh, 3 are y'all with me he said silver and gold have I none but such as I have come on somebody y'all with me well I got the spirit of God inside of me I got the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead inside of me come on now that same spirit will quicken your mortal flesh that same spirit will raise you up. Oh, hallelujah. See, he says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Now, he says something that we get stuck on a lot. Right after that, he looks and he says, What are you or who are you, O mountain? See, we always go to Mark 11, verse 24, and we talk about how we have to speak to the mountain. But we don't know what the mountain is. And sometimes we're speaking to, to, to cancer. We're speaking to disease. We're speaking to these things. But in all reality, Jesus already conquered cancer. He already conquered disease. He already conquered misery. He conquered sin, death, hell, and the grave. So what are we speaking? Well, he tells us in the context here, because sometimes we got this idea that, you know, I had a lady one time was in my meeting, and she looked at me and she said, I speak to this tumor in my breast every day. I said, well, Jesus said, if you speak to it, it'll be removed. And she looked at me and she said, but I'm going to continue to speak to it. I said, well, you get up every morning after you speak to it, and you look for it to see if it's still there, don't you? She said, yes, I do. 
I said, then you're not speaking to it. She got quiet. And I thought, well, you don't understand, see, because you got to understand that Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7, is an example of what Jesus was talking about in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. And in the same context, he says here, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. See, if you understand the power God's inside of you, the power that came from heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That power didn't come upon us just to be upon us. It's inside of us. It quickens our mortal flesh. It causes our eyes to open. It causes our ears to open. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard of the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Oh, praise God. Amen. Sometimes we need our eyes opened. Sometimes we need to open our eyes. He says here, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And then in the next verse, he says, who are you, mountain? Oh, dear God. Just like that song we just sang, you know, you got to get that deep inside of you. Because I'll tell you, you'll look at cancer and say, who are you? What are you? Where do you think you came from? Oh, hallelujah. When you wake up and you're depressed and you're sad, you can say, who are you? You don't belong to me. When you want to when you want to quit, you want to give up. You say, "Wait a second. Who are you? Where'd you come from? You're you're knocking on the wrong door." <laughs> And see, when you get this revelation deep inside of you, you'll start to realize where you're seated. You're seated in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. You're above sickness. You're above disease. Why? Because the Spirit of grace lifted you and caused you to sit in a place that's far beyond you. See, that's why he says here in this context, look at it now. He says in the context, he says, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And then he says, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become a plain hill. I, I always say it this way. There's something about when you get in an airplane. I used to live in Bogota, Colombia. And, and Bogota, Colombia was a valley inside of a volcano. And so the mountains were so high. And when you would come out on an airplane in Bogota, Colombia, you were already at 11,000 feet. And so you're going off of 11,000 feet. And you've got mountains all around you. And your, your, your mind is saying, dear God, get this airplane above those mountains. Are y'all with me? Because the mountains are big. They look impossible to get over. Are y'all with me? They look like it's nothing that can keep me from getting over those mountains. I don't know how I'm going to get above that mountain. And all of a sudden, the, the airplane takes off. And it starts to go up. And see, as that airplane's going up, it, it's the same spirit that came on you last night that jumped out of that wheelchair and started walking. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. It, 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 it's, it's the same spirit that came on this man over here that threw his cane down and took off running. There's something about the grace of God. Shh. The grace of God is the joy of the Lord that gives me strength. The grace of God is the joy that's unexplainable, unattainable. It's, it, 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 you can't stop it. It's inside of you, and it lifts you higher. See, that's why he says in the context, he says, he said, who art thou? And he says, he says, and I will bring you forth as the top stone that shouts what? 
grace. How many know grace came before faith? Grace is what saves us. Grace is what heals us. Grace is what delivers us. Grace is what causes the mountain to go away. But by faith, we are saved through grace. Come on, somebody. It's the grace of God that saves us. But by faith, we're saved. Are y'all with me? What activates that grace that's inside of you is your faith. What activates the grace of God that's inside of you is your faith. And when you release your faith, you'll begin to see things. I remember when I was going in that airplane and all of a sudden I looked out the window and as I looked out the window, those mountains that were huge now just became molehills because I went to another perspective. I went to another perspective, my brother. I, I went higher and I was looking down. That's why, that's why I spoke to you what I spoke last night. I said, when you're sleeping, you see yourself walking, don't you? Come on, somebody. See, you get a different perspective. You get a different perspective. And he's telling us in this context that when we speak to the mountain, grace, 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 the mountain becomes a molehill. Come on, somebody, y'all with me now. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 4, it says, And my message and my preaching was not with persuasive words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration and the Spirit of the power of God. So his preaching wasn't just theology. It was demonstration. Paul was saying, I give testimony of what I preach. Come on, somebody, y'all with me now. Paul was saying, look at this now. He says in verse 5, so that your faith. See, we need faith to release rivers. We need faith to release the flood of God. We need faith to release grace. Grace, the Bible tells us, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. We're saved by grace. Through faith and by grace, we are raised up in Him. When Jesus went to heaven, we went with Him. When he rose up and took authority of the keys of death, hell, and the grave, we went with him. When he sat down at the right hand of God, we went with him. When you understand where you're seated, you'll laugh more. When you understand where you're seated, when the devil comes in like a flood, the Lord's going to raise a standard against him. When you understand where you're seated, the mountain becomes a molehill. When you understand where you're seated, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of grace that God has given to you through His mercy. The Bible tells us that he took the curtains and he ripped them from the top to the bottom. And now we can come, according to Hebrews, boldly to the throne of grace and obtain the mercy of God and obtain what we believe we have received by faith. Oh, praise God. That's why people ask me all the time, brother, why you laugh so much? 
I laugh because I know where I'm seated. <laughs> he that sits in heaven laughs. If you start to realize where you're, you're seated, you'll start laughing more. When the devil comes in with cancer, you go, <laughs> When a pandemic hits our country, we're going to go, <laughs> When the devil attacks your body with a stroke, you're going. <laughs> no matter what the mountain is, we can laugh because we're higher than the mountain. We're higher than the circumstance. We're higher than anything in this earth. That's why the Bible says greater is he that's in you. Oh, I'll tell you, brother, I, I keep picking on you tonight. Is that all right? I keep picking on you, but it's a good pick. <laughs> because inside of you is what you can see. And if you can see yourself walking, if you can see your legs coming back to life and your arms functioning and your body responding, I'm telling you, that will give you a place of joy that will cause the devil to shut his mouth about keeping you in that wheelchair the rest of your life. That's why I laugh so much. You say, well, what's laughter got to do with it? Well, the Bible says in verse 5, so that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the Spirit. So when, when it feels like everything's going south, I'm going north. <laughs> I'm going to sit in a place that's above all principalities and powers. See, see, that's why the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, look at that with me. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, who are protected by the power of God. Somebody say the power of God. Through faith. For a salvation ready to be revealed in the last days. Shh. He said, in the last days, I'll pour my spirit out on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will have visions. And your old men will get their dreams back. Some of you old men get your dream back. Come on, somebody. I'll tell you right now, 25 years of fighting cancer, he got his dream back today when he was singing, my God is bigger. My God is stronger. My God is greater than anything in this earth. He saw something that made him just jump up and take his cane and run. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'll tell you, we're living in the last days. The Bible tells us that while Peter spoke in, verse, in chapter 10 of the book of Acts, verse 44, the Holy Ghost fell on everybody that was listening. The Holy Ghost is inside of you right now coming upon you. I'll tell you, your faith will stand when you understand the power that's inside of you. Paul said, I don't preach theology. I don't preach messages. I don't preach the, the Bible with just doctrine. I preach it with demonstration. I preach it with the Word being confirmed, with signs and wonders following it. Why? So that your faith will stand. See, your faith won't stand on great doctrine. Your faith will stand because it sees a man throw his, cup, his, his cane down and take off running. That we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the... Come on, somebody. Y'all with me now? So faith will stand when we understand the power of the grace of God that's inside of us that will quicken our mortal flesh. That's why he says here, in this you will greatly what? Rejoice. 
Come on, somebody. Y'all with me now. In what I'm talking about, you'll greatly what? You know what it means to rejoice? It means to rejoice. <laughs> the devil said, what? Ha, ha, ha. Look what it says. Look what it says in, in verse, where is it at now? Verse, verse, verse 6. And in this you will greatly rejoice. Even though now for a little while it's still necessary that you be distressed a little bit because of the trial that's come against you. How I many you know the trial comes in sickness? The trial comes in sadness. The trial comes as a mountain. The trial can come as a stroke. The trial can come as, as depression or oppression. But there's a joy. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 7. So that the proof of your faith. Oh, come on, somebody. So that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, that perishes. You know what? We, we so many times take trials and tribulations and persecutions and things in this world personal. But they have nothing to do with you. The temptation, the trial comes for a purpose. It doesn't come to make you feel sad. It doesn't come to make you feel like, oh, God must be trying me through this. The trial comes to test your faith, not you. So stop letting it be so personal. We make it so personal that we blame God. Because we surely don't want to blame ourselves. That's why it says in James chapter 1 verse 13. When you're tested. When you're trialed. Don't say God did it. Because he can't tempt anyone with sin. So when the trial comes. It don't really matter where it comes from. It might come from your boss. And we want to call the boss the devil. He's just a carnal figure in your life. But it's sometimes more precious than gold. Because the faith that you have can give you joy even when your boss looks at you and says, Are you a louse? You can look at him laugh and just say, it's all good, boss, it's all good. <laughs> He's going to say, why are you laughing? Because it's all good. <laughs> because you know that you got something inside of you that brings joy. you got something inside of you that lifts you above. you got something inside of you that the enemy can't steal. That's why Paul said, I preach so that your faith will rest. Oh, there's something about getting your faith to rest. If your faith's not resting, then every morning the devil's talking to you. He's lying to you. He's cheating you. He's trying to steal from you. He's making you sad. He's making you depressed. He's making you oppressed. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. The trial might not even be from the devil, but he'll take the trial and turn it into something against you. Trial comes to steal your faith. I was going to go into several different things, but I just want to quote them. I want to bring them here. But the story in, in 2 Kings chapter 6 starts in verse 13. How many know that story? And there was a, a servant that was alongside of Elijah. And, 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 and the servant comes back and says, 
Amar is about to attack us. He's coming to confiscate you. He wants to take you. And he said, and Elijah looked at him and said, don't worry about it. And he said, come on up with me. So they went up to the top of the mountain. And when they went up to the top of the mountain, they could see the armies of the Amorites and the Armenians coming around them. And they knew, dear Lord, we got a problem. And, and Elijah looked at his servant and, and he said, Lord, open his eyes. <laughs> Eye has not seen, ear has not heard the things that God's prepared for you. Oh, come on, somebody. Elijah looks out and says, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see different. Let him see different. See, you got to change your thinking. Because when the trial comes, the first thing you do is start blaming God. God's taking me through this to see if I'm strong. Well, you're not. And you think God's stupid enough that he's double-minded and he don't know you don't have enough strength to get through it? No, but we blame God or we blame the situation instead of really blaming ourselves and saying, wait a second, James chapter 1 verse 2, beloved, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations because you know that the trying of your faith works patience and let patience have its perfect work until you're endured not did not lacking anything there's a joy inside of you that lifts you above your circumstances lifts you above your problems lifts you above your sickness lifts you above everything that's in this earth and that's why it says in Psalms chapter 2 verse 4 he that sits in heaven laughs He laughs. You laugh. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. There's a joy that flows from within. It's called the grace of God. It lifts you above your circumstances. It lifts you above your problems. It lifts you above everything that's around you. And people look at you and say, how can you be joyful in your situation? And you can laugh and say, I can't explain it. But all I know, there's a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. See, that's the... Some of y'all going to start laughing with me tonight. Hallelujah. Shh, glory to God. No, 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 no. no. Look, look at this. Look at this. It, it says, even though tested by fire may be found as a result of praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus. You can throw me in the fire and I'm going to come out not smelling like smoke. Because I'm not going to bow down and worship your God. That's what he said. Come on now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saying, go ahead. Do what you want. But I'm not going to worship your God. And you're not going to change my name. And you're not going to bring me into your concept of thought. I know who I serve. I know who I am. And I know where I'm at. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. <laughs> Woo! He's he's my drinker. Sometimes sometimes you just gotta get drinkers. Sometimes you're a drinker too. You got a drinker sitting beside you. He's not a thinker, he's a drinker. And if you're a drinker and not a thinker, you're not a stinker. Oh, glory to God. 
God, religious people don't like that. <laughs> now, now, look at this. Look at this. Keep going with me. <laughs> verse 8. Verse 8. It says, and though you have not what? Come on, somebody, say it. And though you have not seen him. See, Elijah looked up and said, Lord, open my servant's eyes so he can see what I see. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. I'm telling you, my prayer tonight is, is that, that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you a spirit of wisdom and knowledge in him that you might have your eyes of your heart opened up so that you can see and have knowledge of the glory of God that's inside of you. See? See that? <laughs> Woo! She's getting drunk. You say, what's this got to do with anything? See, it has a lot to do with it. If you want your faith to rest, you've got to realize that the mountain is moved by the grace of God. And when you get to the place where you now can see that mountain moved and speak to that mountain what you want it to be, you will have a place in the glory of God that seats you in a heavenly place. Shh. That's why in verse 8 of 1 Peter chapter 1, look at this. It says, and though you have not seen him, you love him. He's talking about trials against your faith. So we have another story in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 43. Another servant. And God says by the prophet Elijah, go up the mountain seven times and tell me what you see. I'm saying that to this next generation. What do you see? You see a religious spirit? You see a religious church, I'm telling you right here, you don't see religion. Are you all with me? That's one thing this man is not religious. Not too many churches you go to, you get the buckets thrown at you. Come on, somebody. This is not a religious church. This is a church that has a relationship with Jesus. This is a church that's hungry for the Holy Ghost. This is a church that wants to cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick. Raise the dead. But even though you haven't seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now. See, Elijah said, go up the mountain, tell me what you see. See, faith believes in what it's not seeing. Faith is a substance. You know what that substance is? It's the hope that's in your life that you can see by faith even though you don't see it. It's a substance that's a foundation that will take the grace of God and begin to operate it in your behalf, even though you don't see it. Elijah said, come down, tell me what you see. He said, I don't see anything. <laughs> I, I still don't see anything. And we got a whole generation today that's not seeing anything. Are you all with me? They're religious. They go to churches that, you, that they think all you got to do is have good praise and worship and, and sing rock and roll concerts. Come on, somebody. And, and then they go out to the bars afterward. They're not seeing anything. You're getting awful quiet out here. Amen. And so Elijah looks at his servant and said, what do you see? Oh, I'll tell you, when you understand that, you'll start to get a different perspective of what you're seeing. Ah, oh, you didn't get it. 
You didn't get that. Are y'all with me now? See, you get a different perspective of what you're seeing seated at the right hand of God that's far above all principalities and powers. And you're looking down at a mountain that now has become a molehill. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit that raises you up and puts you in a place where you now start to see what God sees. See, God calls things that be not as though they were. He never looks down and says, oh, sister so-and-so has cancer. No, he looks down and says, sister so-and-so is healed by the stripes of Jesus, the blood of God. The, God's only begotten son has been shed, and she's healed. He calls things that be not as though they were. See, and that's faith. So Elijah looked at his servant and said, what are you seeing? And his servant said, I don't see anything. He said, go back up. So he went back up, and this time Elijah put his head between his legs and began to pray. And he began to birth and began to cry out, God, let him see what I'm seeing. Shh. Elijah was crying out, Lord, let him see what I'm seeing. Let that person with cancer see what I'm seeing. Let that person in the wheelchair see what I'm seeing. Let that person with a cane see what I'm seeing. Let that person that's bound with disease that the doctors say is incurable see what I'm seeing. Well, you know, when you start to see from up there, that's when joy begins to flow from within. Oh, some of you are getting this. See, beloved, count it all joy when you fall into temptation. You know what the temptation is? It's not a trial. It's a temptation to give up in the trial. It's just like a boxer. A boxer's boxing. He starts to get a hit in the side, in the right side. And then he gets hit in the left side. He starts to stumble. It's about time. He's about to fall. They throw in the towel. See, when the temptation comes to throw in the towel, that's when you hold fast to your faith. And you say, I'm not throwing in the towel, bless God. I'm winning this battle. Come on, somebody. I'm going to fight my faith. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to see by faith. Nothing's going to stop me from obtaining what I can have. See, he said, what do you see? The man came back down. He said, I've seen something. He said, what'd you see? He said, I seen a hand. It was about the size of a man's hand. And he said, it's coming right after us. It's coming right at us. And it's full of abundance of rain. See, Elijah already saw it. Elijah already knew it was there. Elijah already prophesied according to James chapter 5. A man of like manner had said, it will not rain until I tell it to. You will not die until I tell it to. Oh, come on somebody. Elijah was a man just like you, just like me. But he saw different. He saw things differently. Look what it says in verse 8. Even though you don't see him, you love him. Mm. Look what he says. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him. There's something he can't know. No devil in hell. No Satanist, atheist can steal from me. And that's him. Because I believe even though I don't see. I believe even if I don't have hope. I believe even though you can't convince me it's true or it's not. I believe, even though I don't see. <sighs> Elijah was trying to get him to see what he was seeing. It tells us here, look, 
you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Ah, uh, inside of you is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. My God shall supply all your needs according to the riches that's in his what's in his the Bible says it's an inexpressible joy and it's full of his oh come on somebody some of you getting this now are you all with me it's not by might it's not by power it's by the grace of God the grace of God lifts us above every circumstance, every trial, everything the devil tries to bring against us. It lifts us and sets us in a place that's far above if any of these things. Come on, somebody. And it's an inexpressible joy. You can't explain why you're happy. Can't explain why it's joyful. But all I know is it's inside of me. And that power sets me free. Oh, come on, somebody, y'all with me now. He says it's full of glory and obtain as the outcome of our faith. Why does the devil want to come against your faith? He wants to steal your faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, come on, somebody, y'all with me now. Abraham was counted righteous because of his faith. Abraham brought forth Isaac because of his faith. Abraham was ready to crucify his only son because of his faith. Why? Because he could see that there's a resurrection, that God will raise him from the dead even if I do take his life. See, there's a joy inside of you that's unexplainable but when you begin to release and I'm not talking about laughter I'm talking about the position of where you're seated see laughter is an expression of joy laughter is an expression of your joy but it's not joy joy can be manifested through many different ways but there's a joy inside of you and that joy is what you believe you either believe it or you don't are you with me see now I want you to go just real quick with me 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 the Lord is working mightily in our midst right now something do you know even though I haven't prayed for anybody whatsoever the word is lighting up darkness right now that's why the Bible says while Peter spoke the Holy Ghost fell because faith comes by and by the See, right now, there's such faith in this atmosphere. There's so much faith right now created in this place. Oh, come on, somebody, y'all with me. That no matter what the devil begins to talk to you about right now, you say, ah, ah, ah. No matter if the devil says, well, you're not going to get healed. You've been prayed for a hundred times. That's when you remind him, wait a second, who art thou, O mountain? 
Who do you think you are to tell me I'm not going to get healed? Stand up, sir. You're going to get healed right now. Walk out in the aisle. The power of God's about to fall on you strong. Raise your hands up there and receive. Here it comes right now. I speak to this body and I command alignment from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I speak to the shoulders. I speak to his upper back. And I speak to the lower back. And I command in Jesus' name right now by the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, quicken his mortal flesh. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. In the name of Jesus, here it comes right now. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 look at this. In verse 3 of chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to people that perish. But Jesus lifted the veil. Oh, come on, somebody. And now we can see. You know what we can see? We can see even though I was a filthy sinner, he gave his life on that cross for me long before I even knew it. Even though I was dying of a disease, he took upon my diseases on that cross. It's foolishness to a mind that can't understand it, but it's power to those that understand it. Those that can see it, it's the power of God unto salvation. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not living with a veil over my eyes anymore. I walk by faith, not by sight. I don't care who gets in as a president. I will not serve them. I will serve my Lord. My kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. My kingdom is the kingdom of God. I don't care if they try to persecute the church because I'm going to pray and God's going to bring his spirit out upon the church and shake this very building that we're in and fill us with boldness to stand up in the midst of persecution and say, you can't stop us. Because I see something. Come on, somebody. I don't care if the doctors say I'm dying and I don't have any cure. I see something different. I don't care if the mountain looks like we can't pay our bills. I see something different. I don't care if the doctor says you have to take meds. I see something different. Oh, come on, somebody. Look what the Word of God says. In whose case the God of this world blinds the minds of the unbelieving so that they can't see the light. But verse 6 says, For God who said light shine out of darkness is the one who now shines in our hearts and gives the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that's found in the face of Jesus. Oh, now you're getting it, now you're getting it. But we have this treasure. Woo, come on, somebody, are you with me now? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. No matter what vessel it is, though the outward man 
is decaying away. Though the outward man is perishing, the Spirit of God that's inside of me is renewing me every day of my life. Why? Because I don't look at what I can see. I look at what the Word says. Church, if we could get this, we would be the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power in the earth. If we could get this, our neighborhood would be delivered. Our neighborhood would be set free. Demons would be afraid of you. Somebody say hallelujah. Real quick, real quick, go with me. Look what he says in verse 8. We are afflicted on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not struck down. We're, 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 we're struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because we always carry about in our body the dying of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he died so that we can live in the midst of whatever trial or tribulation or circumstance that comes against you. Because we're seeing something else. We're seeing the light. We're seeing the light. It's shining in our hearts. You know what's happening to you right now? You're sitting there and light's coming on. And you're going, wow, I, I can't believe I've allowed this in my life. Why am I allowing sickness in my life? Why am I allowing poverty to destroy my home? Why am I allowing sin to reign in my life? God, I see something. This is what he says in verse 11. For we who live, say I live, by faith, not by sight. I walk by faith, not by sight. You who live are constantly delivered to death. What that means is, is when the devil tries to get you to believe something that's contrary to life, you can say, I'm already dead. You can't kill a dead man. You can't make a dead man sick. You can't make a dead man poor. I'm already dead. And now I live. By faith in resurrection power. <laughs> and, and, and that's why that's why he says, so that the life of Jesus will continually be made manifest in my mortal flesh. So then death works in me so that I can keep bringing life to you. When cancer comes along, you say, cancer, you can't come on a dead man. And that happens so that you can keep preaching the gospel and keep setting people free. Real quick, look what he says. But you, say me, having the same spirit of faith. I believe, therefore I speak. Woo! <laughs> I believe, therefore I speak. We also believe, therefore we speak. Because we know that he raised Jesus from the dead and also is presenting him in me for all things are for your sake so that the grace ooh, the grace of God will continue look at this uh, spread to more and more people and I give thanks that it abounds to the glory of God Paul's saying, 
Though the outward man perishes, yet my inner man is renewed daily. No weapon formed against me will prosper because greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. So, so when pain comes, we laugh. Why? Because I'm by grace seated above all circumstances, above all temptations, above everything the devil tries to bring against me. And that's why he says, wild. Say the word wild. We don't look at what we see. But all things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hands and just worship Him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Stand up here, young men. Stand up here. Come on, just worship Him right now. The power of God is falling in this place. Raise your hands up. The Bible tells us depression and oppression is far from us meds do nothing but disguise the symptoms of the depression that's in our lives but Jesus has set us free from all depression and all oppression. <sighs> the Lord told me when I walked by you that He's setting you free <sighs> from a spirit that brings you to a place of a bipolar mentality. A spirit that tries to get you to believe something that's not true. The Lord says, what do you see? What do you see? Not what you feel. What do you see? And I heard the Spirit of God say, freedom is yours. Raise your hands up here. It comes in the name of Jesus. I speak to this spirit that continually haunts your mind and torments you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break its stronghold off of you right now. In the name of Jesus, and I declare unto you, the anointing breaks every yoke, lifts every burden. And I command in Jesus' name, freedom! In Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 
Shohoranam Radeshti Kam. Young lady, come up here. Hallelujah. Raise your hands up here, sweetheart. Come up with me. The anointing of God is on your life. The call of God is on your life. You run from it all the time. You run from it all the time. The enemy has tried to take you into a place that is not real. It's a false life. I heard by the Spirit of God, it's a deceptive spirit. And this deceptive spirit will cause you to believe that culture, that the ways of life, that the hour we're living in is acceptable. But God says, daughter, I have so much for you and so much more to accomplish in your life. I called you from your mother's womb. I placed you in a family where you would be tutored, loved on, and released. I'm not finished with you. Do not allow the world to pervert your mind. The Lord says, I'm doing a new thing in your life right now that's going to change you. And that the unnatural things of this world will no longer look natural. But I will cause you to begin to see with a different perspective even to the point that your mental capacities will be destroyed if you do not see the enemy wants to take your life but God says I've come that you might have a life and have it more abundantly. Honey, touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her. The power of God's coming upon you right now. And I say, light be. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Stand up here. Stand out in the aisle and raise your hands up there. There's a prophetic anointing upon your life. It's been upon your life since you were a child. There's a song in your spirit. There's an anointing to hear it. God has given you special talents and anointings and the Lord says Whoosh. the Bible says forsake not the assembling of yourselves in the last days see it's like Pastor Joel said there's great power when we all come together that's why in the last days, the devil wants you to stay home. In the last days, the devil wants you to not go to church. Is this your husband? It is, right? Come up here. It's been said by the Spirit of God, the call of God's upon the two of you. And that God has anointed you and called you to be a part. And I heard the Spirit of God say, there is a great need for the part that's missing, even in the body, because you're missing in action. God says, I've called the two of you to be a part, and I'm stirring up the gift of God inside of you.
because I've brought you out of a bondage that you could not get yourself out of. I brought you out. I delivered you. And I set you free. And her prayers has brought you there. But the Lord says, it's time the two begin to elevate in the anointing of the call of God together. Not just her, but the two. And I heard the Spirit of God say, the weapons that have been being formed against your emotional state, causing panics, attacks of the enemy are broken today in Jesus' name. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands up there and just begin to worship. See, when this anointing begins to flow, it's not to spectate it's to participate. I want you to begin to see what you haven't seen before. Whew. Stand up here, sir. There's a joy in the call of God. There's a joy in the things of God. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I brought you here when you were wounded. Wounded by the church wounded by people, wounded by others. But I, I poured in the oil and the wine because I want to use you. The devil would like you to believe that you're not going to make it. <laughs> but he's a liar. And he's under our feet. And greater is he that's in you The enemy's trying to stop your heart. But the Lord says, ha, ha, ha. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Stand up here. The Bible tells us that Jesus is forever living to make intercession. You've tried so hard to get out of that call and out of that anointing. You've said, Lord, just let somebody younger take that on. I don't want to be that intercessor that's up all night and praying and praying. But the Lord says, I forever live to make intercession for you. I heard the Lord say, he's touched with the feelings of your infirmities. And the enemy tries to cause your heart to race in palpitations, which brings fear over you causing you to want to run but God says daughter I'm touched with the feelings of your infirmities and every bit of attack that has come against your heart in the past is the past and the future is what you can't see but if you behold what you can't see by faith you'll see your healing is in me arthritis in the hips which is though the outward man perishes, the 
the inward man's renewed. Arthritis in the hips has slowed you down. But the Lord says, it's not time to slow down. It's time to pray. The healing power of God right now is coming over your heart and over your hips. And every bit of the resurrection is flowing through your body right now in Jesus' name. She keeps wanting to laugh because laughter does good. It's like a medicine. It calls, you can't take a better arthritic medicine than laughter. <laughs> there it goes right there. Receive it now in Jesus' name. <sighs> there it is right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. In Jesus' name, I release these hips. Now! Now! 